You're sure this place is empty? We've scoped it out. If we're gonna do this, we need to do it now before someone else beats us to it. In and out before sunrise. Just like we planned. Just like we planned. It was turning night as the trio entered the condo. It was completely dark and quite spooky. Miko and April wanted to abort the plan and get the hell out, but Drew was persistent. They started looting, finding very useful supplies on the ninth floor, like prescription medicine, antibiotics, batteries, vitamins, boots, dental floss, and a magnifying glass. As Miko, Drew and April were heading up, they decided to take a break in an empty condo. It seemed safe, as it was quiet, so April started writing in her diary and Drew turned on his radio to listen to the party. But that wasn't a smart move. They didn't hear them coming because they had the radio on, but out of nowhere the door got kicked in, several guys started running in and April got hit in the head. Everything went black after that. She woke up in another room, tied to a chair. April was sure she was about to die and the only thing raising to her mind was that she did everything by the book. They paid attention to foot traffic, watched the building until they were certain it was empty and only used a tiny pen light when searching for supplies. She just hoped she wouldn't get raped as she was surrounded by writers. Then, out of the blue, a mysterious man came in. He wasn't wearing a uniform, but he was fighting as if his weapon was a part of him. He shot two Rikers before he even was in the doorway, and a third right through the kitchen cabinets. Another three gang members approached in the hall, and the hall lit up. The guy went down into cover. April dragged a chair over to him, only to see he had been shot. She had never seen this much blood. He had bullet holes in his neck and thigh, and there was blood coming out of it in pulses. Tipping herself over, she reached for his knife and cut herself loose. Using the knowledge from the book, she tried to stop the bleeding, but it was too late. Here she was, trying to save a life, but she was powerless. As he was dying, he looked at her. She could only look into his eyes as he passed away. It was Doc Sutton, the last surviving member of Noble Squad, the squad that was now completely wiped out. After things settled, she wrapped his body in a sheet. She had learned a thing or two from the survival guide, so the first thing she did after that was collecting what she could find. She picked up his backpack with the signature orange antenna on it, and though she wasn't a fan, she also reached for his weapons. An assault rifle and a pistol. This got April thinking. Similar to the guy in the back of the ambulance, this guy in civilian clothes had military equipment and that orange antenna. Was there some secret society of vigilante heroes? She couldn't find an answer right then and there. Miko and Drew were dead. The two people who took her in when she was at her worst, gone. For making one small mistake. It's the day after, 25th of December and it's Christmas day. And April is all alone. After some reminiscing about Bill, she looked through the book and decided what to do next. However, on page 153 there was a puzzle. The page showed different diseases and their virality. Every disease had icons behind them, indicating how lethal that disease is. But something was off. Some diseases that were obviously not as lethal as others had more icons. The amount of icons refers to a letter in the name of each disease. For the first one it's the fifth letter, for the second one it's the third letter, and so on. When completing this puzzle, it spelled out something April was surprised to see. Dr. Liu can help. Dr. Liu was the guy that was on the back of Bill's comic book card and in the back of the van on the day Bill got murdered. So it seems Merch knew Dr. Liu and it all must be connected somehow. April decided to put her plans to find Merch on hold and go see the doctor. Dr. Lee. The next day, April went to the doctor. She asked for him at the post office, known to us at the base of operations. A person in a JTF uniform led her to an infirmary. And there he was, Dr. Lee. 
When she entered the room, she noticed he recognized her. Taking her into a separate room, a bit panicked, he asked her how she found it, and she showed him Bill's comic card. He was the one that was in the back of the car. He knew Bill, but he didn't know what Bill was working on. There was research towards treatment, building on existing biotech programs, but he wasn't working on that himself. Upon being asked who killed Bill, he said he didn't know, but the shifting of his eyes gave away his lie. April settled for those answers right then and there, and the doctor actually discouraged her from looking into Bill's murder any further. After talking to him, she saw another man with a similar pack. He asked her how the war was going and April tried to play it off cool, but he could tell she wasn't supposed to wear the backpack, but he let her go anyway. She returned to Miko and Drew's place, which was kinda odd to now call her home. She started paging through the book and at page 32 she stumbled on another puzzle. Here's a warning for radiation, where he refers to specific advice on several pages in quite a weird order. Clues in the text reveal that each number refers to a letter from the title. So 19 refers to the 19th letter of the title. After she lettered every number, it was only a matter of putting them in the right order. It spelled out the following. Variola virus strain made for use. Merch knew about the virus, this was the proof. She had to find him to ask him what he knew about the virus, what he knew about Bill. But April started feeling like she's sick as if she's contracted the dollar flu just now. So her search had to wait. The day after, she's feeling worse. She started writing things you only write when you think you're about to die. She was spiking a heavy fever, she's really thirsty and she's burning up. To her surprise, she woke up the next morning. The sun was up, the fever was low again and she was freezing. As she ate some food and drank some water, she started reading and writing in the survival guide. Merch wrote a page about pop-up pirate radio stations, just like the one she's heard on Drew's radio. He seemed to either be crazy or have some inside information, and as we know, she was talking about none other than Rick Falassi. The rest of the day she spent resting. The following day, now the third day of the fever, again to her surprise she woke up. As she thought she was going to die. And she started writing in a book as in a crazy fever dream. But it seemed apparent that someone was looking for her. It's December 30th, the fever passed and she could finally think clearly. She mentioned that one day prior, there were people looking for her. Now she could kind of remember who. At 29, she was listening to the pirate radio podcast with Rick Falassi raving on about something. Meanwhile, she was looking at the backpack when all of a sudden a burst of static came over the radio and at the same time, a little gleam came off the antenna on the backpack. She fell out of bed, crawled to the backpack when another burst of static interrupted the transmission only to return to Falassi screaming. In a rush, April cut off the antenna and threw it out of the window. It landed on a roof on the lower building outside, and not even two minutes later, these soldiers, looking like division agents, were kicking in the roof and looked around at the windows to see who threw the antenna. Luckily, she managed to shut the window in time so they didn't know it was her. But who could these guys have been? Were they division agents? But she thought the division agents were the good guys. Maybe there was some subdivision in the division? She didn't know. April felt less and less secure in Miko and Drew's apartment. New York was being carved into territories by the JTF, Rikers and now also Cleaners. It's a war and she was stuck in the middle of it. She needed to get out of there, out of the apartment, to look for merch. But where could he be? Would he be in Harlem? No. Maybe he was in the dark side.